Oh. I, I gotta pay more attention to where I am. Time to feed the trolls. Hey guys, it's me, Cute Fuzzy Weasel. Still, still here. Still underground. Hooray for underground miss. Merry underground miss. Yay. I don't, I don't think I'm ever gonna leave. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be down here. I'm gonna be down here forever. On the last Family Fun episode of Feeding the Trolls, we heard from the channel, what should you say about what you should say about global warming? In that video, they said that global warming was natural and uh, we aren't causing it. Don't look at the man behind the curtain. Continue to buy as much gasoline as possible. Uh, don't trust the government and vaccines are fake. That's what they said. You can go, go back and check. I'm 98% sure that's all of it. You're in a conversation and someone says, we must do anything and everything to stop climate change. What would you say? I would say, good luck. You're not gonna succeed, but good luck. In the last video, we discussed two questions that can help us really understand the current situation about climate change. That's a weird way of saying that you lied about the data what it means that the earth is warming, it means things are bad, and whether or not the warming trends are the result of CO2 emissions. They are, but again, you were too busy lying about that, so... Once we understand the issue of climate change, we need to understand what solutions are being proposed. As of right now, the solutions are running the gambit from do nothing to do just slightly more than nothing. Here are two questions to ask. First, we need to know, is climate change bad? All right, go on. The fear over climate change is based on the assumption that the Earth is already above its optimum temperature. <coughs> there is no optimum temperature of Earth. Earth doesn't care what temperature it is. Earth could be zero degrees anything. Earth could be a luminous ball of plasma. It wouldn't care. There's an optimum temperature for human civilization. You know, it, it sits between the temperature of uh, everyone dying and the uh, other temperature of everyone dying. But we don't know what the Earth's optimum temperature is. Okay, well, um, here's a great way to figure out if you're at the optimum temperature. Um, if it's so hot that your crops are dying, there's no rain and the sea level keeps rising, you are not at the optimum temperature. I, I know it's hard to process that. I get it, little, little too much information to go in there, but roughly speaking, if, uh, if you can't, um, survive, that means it's either too cold or too hot. For all we know, the optimum could be even higher than where it is now. Why are you just standing there? My house is on fire! Hey, you need to calm down there, little man, all right? We don't know what the optimum temperature of your house is. What are you talking about? For all we know, your house's optimum temperature could be a thousand degrees. We don't know. So while we figuring that out, Frankie there is gonna be throwing more gasoline on your burning house. But that's just gonna make things worse. Do you know that for a fact? Maybe throwing gasoline on your house will make it better. If so, then a little warming would be good. But what about all those warnings of quickly rising sea levels? You mean what's actually happening? Stronger and more frequent hurricanes. You mean what's actually happening? Mass starvation. You mean what's actually happening? A spike in insect-borne diseases. You mean what's actually happening? Drought and more. You mean what's actually happening? 
Actually, those are predictions about what warming could lead to. So far, none of these doomsday scenarios have happened. Were you people just living under a fucking rock in 2020? You are literally showing a picture of a fire. Were you not paying the fuck attention to Australia? None of these predictions have happened. <laughs> For example, sea levels aren't rising any faster than they have been for hundreds of years. Not only are sea levels rising faster than previously, they're rising faster than we thought they were going to rise. And we're not getting more or more intense hurricanes now than in the past. Except we literally are. Just more news. <laughs> you guys remember during the 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 start of this pandemic when there was this thing going around online in right wing spheres that uh, we're not getting there aren't more cases of coronavirus people are just reporting on them if we stop reporting on them the number of cases will go down. Do you guys remember that? There's this thing called object permanence. Remember too that as CO2 levels in the atmosphere have gone up, we've achieved the highest standard of living in history. I know you're all very concerned about my drug problem, but let me tell you something. Since my heroin usage has gone up, I've never been happier. This is good news. This is good news. That's good news. That they're going on is good news. That's good news. Oh shit. This, that's also good news. Even though the quality of life on earth is better in some places than others. Especially those places in the world that are being the hardest affected by climate change. It's better everywhere than it was in centuries past. Look, okay, you guys need to calm down. I get that sea levels are rising. We've got microplastics in everybody. Um, crop failures are occurring all over the world. There's less fresh water and there's less forests and there's more carbon dioxide. But hey, at least it's not the 1300s. Am I right, folks? Come on. Come on, everybody. Lend a hand, everybody. Come on. Hey, it's not the 5th century BC. Hey, hey, come on. You got you to gotta give it. You got to give it up for that, everybody. Come on, everybody. It's, it's not literally the Stone Age. Come on. <laughs> In fact, the more developed a nation's economy is, the more it can focus on caring for the environment. Unless that society is split between two opposing political factions, one of which ruled by a party that knows what's going on but doesn't want to really do a whole lot to fix it, and another party that actively cheers when people don't get a vaccine for a virus that's currently ravaging its population. So development may not be the chief threat to the environment. Well, you can't be a threat to an environment that's already been destroyed. It may be its chief solution. Yes, sustainable green technology and renewable energy are both parts of the solution. And will those parts of the solution require more development, more mining of resources? Unfortunately, yes. And there are things we can do to get resources somewhere where we don't have to worry about trashing the environment. We don't really need to worry about CFCs and carbon monoxide out in the asteroid belt. This is kind of why I get a little bit annoyed when people look at like what SpaceX is doing in Blue Origin. They're like, look at them wasting resources up there while well, we could use them down here. And while I do agree that the thing between Branson and Bezos was just two billionaires seeing whose dick was bigger. We need to get resources from elsewhere. And any technology that we can acquire that will make that process easier, that'll help. But you know another thing that'll help? 
regulation. Part of the reason we're in this mess is because of unbridled, unfettered capitalism, stomping and destroying everything in its path to make profit. And that's something we gotta put on a leash. I'm not saying get rid of it. I think capitalism is a force for good when it's controlled in the right way. But I am saying that just letting people do whatever the fuck they want whenever they want because money, that's gonna kill a lot of people. And it's gonna make a lot of our planet literally unlivable. I really don't mean to be a doom scroller here. This is just, it's just hard to not be when I'm dealing with these people just is. Besides, it's not clear that increased CO2 in the atmosphere is a bad thing. Here's a scientific paper that says it is. Future me will find it. I don't feel like Googling just like blatantly obvious shit. So future me, I'm sorry. Fine. There's a paper. Shit, there's another paper. Fuck. There's a bunch of papers. Sorry, future me. Over the last couple of decades, as carbon dioxide levels have gone up, so has the so-called leaf area index. In other words, the planet has gotten so much greener that satellites can detect it from space. You know, satellites are really sensitive pieces of equipment, especially the research satellites that are used to calculate the LAI. So just throwing it out there, the fact that the satellites can detect when things change isn't surprising when that's what they're designed to do. That's like saying, wow, look at this thermometer. It's so amazing that the temperature has risen so much that this thermometer that was built to detect when a temperature changes can detect it when a temperature changes. Amazing. Here's the thing, and also fuck you for making me do work, but here's the thing. From what I have been able to gather, the leaf area index does go up as temperature increases short term. So as areas with ice, let's say, when that ice melts, it exposes ground. And when ground is exposed, plants tend to live there. So as glaciers melt and expose the surface under them, plants take root. Yeah, there's going to be a green bloom in those areas temporarily. However, once the glaciers melt in those areas and fresh water becomes unavailable due to, again, those aforementioned changed weather patterns, once those areas stop getting rain, they start to, uh, die. And once those areas die, the LAI goes down. So saying, well, hey, plants like carbon dioxide, let's all go breathe at a plant. That's, uh, that's not how climate change works. Sorry. This should be no surprise. After all, carbon dioxide is plant food. However, carbon monoxide, ozone, methane, and CFCs are not. And as far as we know, there aren't many plants that can actually metabolize microplastics or toxic industrial waste um, and regardless of whether or not a plant gets carbon dioxide, if there's no fucking water, it's not gonna matter. And actually, and this kind of hit close to where I used to live, if it's the wrong kind of water, that can bring up a lot of issues too, like what's going on in North Carolina with these woods die-offs near the coast. See, as climate change happens and sea levels rise, salt water gets moved inland, and the salt leaches into the soil and kills everything that's not adapted to all that salt. Uh, so, you know, it's it's not it's not like a dial where you just crank the CO2 up and you get green. You know, more CO2, more heat, more green, less CO2, less less heat, less green. It's it's more of a crazy merry-go-round where you just throw our children on it and then you use a motorcycle to spin it until they go flying off in some direction and you just hope they don't land on spikes. While temperature changes can improve certain things, it can also cause certain problems. Greenland, for instance, was once much greener. And people used to be able to live in Madagascar. And the Hoover Dam used to have water behind it. Almost any change in global temperature is going to involve trade-offs. We're just saying that most of those trade-offs involve brown people, so 
Are they really a bad thing? That reminds us that human beings have little control over the climate for good or for ill. This fire that I started in my own house, on my own floor, on my own collection of oily rags, is just blazing out of control and really goes to show just how small we really are and how little control over things we have. Which leads to our second question. Would the proposed solutions help? In the same way that getting off your ass and doing one push up a day will help. It'll, it'll help. The climate is complex and we know that many things affect it. Yeah, like all the shit that we do. For example, Earth's orbit is wobbly and its path around the sun doesn't remain constant. It's not that coal power plant, it's the sun. The sun's just too hot and we're too close. You know what'll help it though? Burning more coal. The sun itself both dims and brightens. Again, it's not all these coal power plants or all these cars or all these strip mining operations or all the shit we've dumped in the oceans or all the land that we've destroyed to create farms. It's not, it's none of that. It's uh, the sun, you know, it's, it's got a dimmer switch and they got a, they got a grip off stage just going like, you know, it's that, it's that guy. Let's break, we gotta blame Jerry. Blame J Jerry, Jerry, what are you doing with the sun's demo switch, Jerry? These factors are all outside of our control and they affect the climate. Yes, factors outside of our control, such as our orbital wobble and the brightness of the sun. Yes, they also affect our climate but so does all the shit that we do. And all the shit that we do is what we have control over. It's like, you know, a lot of things can make someone wet, like rain. We don't necessarily have control over the rain, but we do have control over whether or not we pee ourselves. Even if we knew we were the sole cause of the current warming trend, do we know what the right response would be? Okay, sir, good news. We've determined that your house is not optimum temperature. That fire needs to go out. Thank God, all right, get the water on it. Now, now, hold on there, buddy. We don't know that putting water on your house is gonna put out that fire, though. We need to investigate alternative theories. Maybe, for example, the house would go down in heat if we burned things around it. By signing a UN treaty called the Kyoto Protocol, countries agreed to reduce their CO2 emissions to levels about 5% below what they were in 1990. The United States received a great deal of criticism for not signing this treaty. The US didn't sign the treaty because China wasn't included in it, and we also didn't want to spend the money on enforcing it. But we actually came closer to complying with it than most, if not all, of the countries that actually signed it. And by closer, she means we tried until 2001 and gave up. And by all the other countries, she means all the other countries that also just kind of gave up. The plan just wasn't politically feasible. Oh, sorry guys. Fixing your situation would just not be politically feasible. And even if it were, the UN's own economists stated that full compliance with the Kyoto Protocol would have only slowed the predicted rise in the global temperature by 0 0.05 degrees Celsius. Oh, all right. What should you say? You're, I guess, suggesting then that any plan that comes out needs to have higher targets. Well, I agree with you there. It should have much higher targets. And yet it would have cost between 10 and 50 trillion dollars. So what? Really, no, honestly, so what? You're splitting that bill between all the countries that signed on to that treaty. And it's not like we don't pay that much in shit anyway. Look at our fucking defense budget. But it might be a good idea for us to hang on to that since we're likely to start going to war over water soon. On the other hand, the dramatic change in economic activity related to the coronavirus will, by most estimates, reduce CO2 emissions by 5% in 2020 alone. The coronavirus pandemic will likely cost the US economy more than $16 trillion and has resulted in the deaths of over 400,000 Americans to reach that projected 
But hey, I mean, it, at least we all didn't have to buy hybrids, am I right? Fucking hog hog hybrids. <laughs> and uh, hey, at least we don't have to buy fucking LED light bulbs. I mean, look at them. Look at LEDs, man. You turn them on, they work. You turn them off, they turn off. Come on, I mean, look. <laughs> This is the largest annual reduction on record. And all it took was a global pandemic that decimated economies and left millions dead and hundreds of thousands of people jobless. <laughs> and hey, I mean, would you rather have that or carbon credits? I mean, <laughs> Or is, is this fucking channel for real? Are you people for real? Did someone actually write that with a straight face like, fuck, no one's gonna fucking believe this shit. Is it, like. Even so, it falls short of the 7.6% reduction called for in the Paris Climate Accord, which replaced Kyoto in 2016, and would be at least as costly and impotent. What are you saying? Because trying to solve or mitigate climate change is hard, therefore let's just not do it. It's hard, let's not do it. Having a career is hard, just don't do it. Trying to write a book is hard, give up. Gaining independence from Britain would be hard. It's not worth it. Oh, winning the civil war would be hard. Just let the South be there. Why are we even in World War II? It's hard. Winning the space race against the Soviets, that'd be hard. Making the internet, that, that's hard. Actually doing something about climate change, that'd be hard. If even a global economic shutdown can't meet these UN emissions goals, are those goals realistic? If even the uncontrolled chaos of a global pandemic can't reach the goals of an unrelated piece of climate legislation, is it really worth it? In discussions about climate change, we should be able to agree on a lot. Yeah, like we should be able to agree that it's real and that we're causing it and that we need to do things to slow it down or reverse it. We should be able to agree on those things, uh, but we can't because of you and people like you. We want a clean environment. I want a clean environment. I don't know what the fuck you want. But we must understand the problem and we must understand the solutions that are being proposed. And if those solutions require us to do anything, then maybe those aren't the right solutions. So the next time you're in a conversation about climate change, don't watch this video. Anyway, this is Cute Fuzzy Weasel. Uh, if you like that video and you wanna see more, comment down below, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and hey, if you really wanna help out this channel, you can be a donator, donor, donor nah, don't. You can be on Patreon for a dollar, like these people. And I'm filming this episode um, right after uh, uploading the last episode, so um, I, I don't like I don't know what the responses on Patreon are going to be. So as of this moment, I'm still doing the role. Next episode, if people want me to say their names, I'll say their names. But uh, you know, there you go. Yep. And as always, have a good day.